and I would like to from South Africa, a digital media agency. I have a couple of questions, but I'll stick to three key ones. Um, to start off with, Stefan, your stats, are they not a representative of the cultural understanding of knowledge within the German community? Um, I asked the community of Africa, where we I pose this question in the context of Africa. A content negative, in fact, makes the price of the journal in our country. And the print space is digital. Ça s'applique donc aux médias, à la presse, mais également aux médias numériques. Au niveau donc des médias sociaux maintenant, d'après vous, comment pouvons prendre des dispositions au niveau des journalistes, car il y a beaucoup de fake news que l'on reçoit par des, ce qu'on appelle des journalistes citoyens. Et on sait par le biais des statistiques publiées dans euh, Facebook, etc., que c'est qu'une mère va croire euh, ce que lui dit une autre mère. Euh, alors, comment mettre fin à ça et, et maintenant, au niveau de la euh, réglementation et de la juridiction, euh, quand est-ce qu'on prend en compte les start-up dans ce débat pour réglementer les nouvelles, les, les nouvelles agences de médias Ceci est un grand problème pour les start-up. Monsieur, c'est plutôt une réaction qu'une question. Coming back on the legal discussion we or presentation we had, I don't see why. I mean, we're talking about fake news that really have an impact on the politics. Because when we talk about fake news, it has an impact on the politics. Because when we talk about fake news, it has an impact on the politics. Because when we talk about fake news, it has an impact on the politics. Because when we talk about fake news, it has an impact on the politics. Because when we talk about fake news, it has an impact on the politics. Because when we talk about fake news, it has an impact on the politics. Because when we talk about fake news, it has an impact on the politics. Because when we talk about fake news, it has an impact on the politics. Because when we talk about fake news, it has an impact on the politics. Because when we talk about fake news, it has an impact on the politics. Because when we talk about fake news, it has an impact on the politics. Because when we talk about fake news, it has an impact on the politics. Because when we talk about fake news, it has an impact on the politics. Because when we talk about fake news, it has an impact on the politics. Because when we talk about fake news, it has an impact on the politics. Because when we talk about fake news, it has an impact on the politics. Because when we le russe a eu un certain impact. impact. Si on compare avec les marchés financiers, par exemple, où la dissémination de fausses informations est sévèrement sanctionnée et pénalisée, je ne vois pas pourquoi les, fake news, les autres fake news ne devraient pas être pénalisées. And there, you know, I recognize the difficulties. But if you take, make an analogy with with corruption, fight against corruption. The OECD analogy with the 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 fight against corruption
becoming a fake news because by cyber attack immediately to almost every every site of every de l'Internet pour avoir accès à chaque site uh, like pour les, camp uh, les sites des campagnes électorales, uh, 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 etc. Et c'est ce qui a mené à des cyberattaques uh, aux États-Unis. Deux autres... Uh, Or maybe it was... I, I had a friend helping me That's amplify the reach. <laughs> Uh, my question is for you, Susan. Uh, sorry, just identify yourself. Sorry. My name is Natalie Cartwright. I am Nicole one of the people who runs Cor the startup. I have the AI startup that works directly with startup. banks. Une and the reason why I'm at this conference banks. is we're relatively early stage, we're uh, about Series A. But because of our channel partner with banks, my product will be in the hands of tens of millions of people over banquet. the next couple of years. Um, I'm really interested in Je suis très having an ethical first approach, but it's par not that easy to know where to start or how to do that. But it's not that easy to know where to start or how to do that. Pour une personne de ma, euh, alors quelle serait votre approche Et vous avez. Richard Cooper, Harvard. Uh, one of the speakers, maybe two, mentioned anonymity. Could we do something about that? de l'aspect anonyme et ce qu'on pourrait mettre un système Now, course, pour empêcher le fait de publier that des informations illegal, sous anonymat et so sinon euh, ce serait comme un crime parce que effectivement les fake news sont plutôt favorisés um, par l'aspect anonyme de la publication. Merci. And then we'll go back to the panel. Yes, Sorry, thank you very much. Dania Khatib, I want to ask, we have been speaking here about fake news, Dania about Khatib, who's responsible for that, how to correct them. My question is very simple. Is it feasible giving the big amount of data that's on social media every day? And now uh, the radicalization is mostly done over the internet, over social media. Is it feasible? Who can do that? Who can do such a big job? Thank you. Yes, I think in the end, you've the hardest question. Um, I think what I'll do, given and we've got a little time left to just go back donné, to the panel uh, and uh, have you respond to whatever we can address to you, but um, what makes sense to you, and in the usual way, we'll go in, in reverse order. So, Stefan. Okay. Um, that was a very good question, and of course, um, culture plays a big role, and I even think it's, it's human nature, culture is important, also human nature, um, we are drawn to things that steer us up emotionally, and actually fake news that work, if you look at them, all the fake news that have been really successful, they are very emotional, they, they touch you, I mean, this is why, um, 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 this is why in Germany, for example, a lot of that is on, on immigrant crime, but then crime against um, vulnerable people, against children, against women, you know, because that's, that steers you up emotionally. And, um, and also the social networks have been, they have been optimized to feed into that potential economy that we have. And, 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 and um, people click on that and therefore it also shows up in your news feed more and it feeds more into it. And so that's something we will have to talk about how we deal with that and how we, how we reverse the process where basically the technology uh, takes advantage of some uh, um, issues with our, um, with, 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 with uh, with our um, nature uh, um, being drawn into these emotional issues. And people uh, are saying uh, that we need to talk, dis, talk about, for example, uh, how um, algorithms um, select your news uh, and then, for example, uh, um, the user the user of Facebook should get control of what kind of news they want to have featured. Do I want to see more my family, you know, what's happening in the family? Do I want to see more um, diverse uh, kind of news? Uh, the ability to really have your own say um, in terms of how you want to, um, how, what kind of news you want to set on social media rather than the algorithm just picking up on your natural tendencies. You will have to have this kind of conversation. Um, I wanted to make one brief comment on the regular commentary issue because Germany has just um, gone down this road this year and, um, and uh, adopted a law forcing Facebook and Twitter social media 
mis en place une loi qui impose à Facebook pour autre moteur de recherche, leur impose d'éliminer, d'effacer en fait tout discours incitant à la haine dans un délai de 24 heures. C'est une première au niveau universel. Sinon, les personnes ou les parties qui publient ces informations incitant à la haine seraient passibles d'amendes lourdes. La majorité en fait des fake news ne vont pas contre la loi. Ils restent dans les limites de la loi, même si il s'agit en fait d'informations fausses. Tant qu'il n'y a pas de loi qui criminaliserait entre guillemets la publication des fausses news, des fausses nouvelles. On ne va pas sortir de cette auberge. 24 heures semble à une limite de temps assez longue pour effacer des fausses informations en incitant The only way you can do this is with AI, with right. technology. There's no, I mean, there's millions of posts going up. You will need smart technology. C'est la technologie qui aiderait à réduire en fait ce délai. Il y a des limites technologiques aussi. En fait, on tourne en rond ici. Je, pour rebondir sur ce que ce que vient de dire Stéphane, le, je crois qu'il faut pas essayer de définir juridiquement la fake news parce que c'est un phénomène tellement diversifié que tenter de définir juridiquement c'est euh, ça, ça paraît trop compliqué il faut au contraire utiliser ce qu'on a et contextualiser finalement euh, les, les choses. C'est-à-dire, le contexte, c'est le trouble à l'ordre public. On a des notions en droit qui sont suffisamment générales pour pouvoir euh, répondre à ces, à ces spécificités. Et euh, vouloir à tout prix réglementer. Alors, on a une sénatrice française qui voulait, a fait une proposition de loi pour euh, adopter une loi sur les fake news. Et euh, au contraire, je pense que c'est un danger parce qu'il va falloir euh, définir ce que c'est. Or, euh, on l'a vu, il y a une grande diversité de, euh, de ces fake news. Et pour répondre aux, aux différentes questions, je, je voudrais juste ajouter le... L'idée en fait de co-régulation, c'est vrai qu'aujourd'hui, historiquement, le, le droit des activités numériques, c'est un droit, c'est de la soft law, c'est un droit qui n'est pas contraignant, qui est essentiellement d'origine privée. Et aujourd'hui, on est plutôt dans une tendance où il va falloir co-réguler entre les acteurs publics et les acteurs privés, euh, avec euh, des, des sanctions qui peuvent être juste de la responsabilisation, c'est-à-dire sans son, sanctions euh, dures, mais aussi des sanctions qui commencent à être dures de la part de la Cour de justice de l'Union européenne, de la Commission européenne, euh, on a des, euh, la Cour européenne des droits de l'homme, on a des jurisprudences européennes qui aujourd'hui s'emparent du problème et apportent de véritables solutions et interprètent les règles existantes au regard de euh, cette actualité. Et je pense que c'est là la meilleure, euh, la meilleure solution. Merci. Ok. Je pense. Qu'il n'y a pas de solution à 100% concernant les fake news. Les gouvernements essaient de trouver des solutions. Mais il n'y a pas en fait une solution garantie à 100%. Il y aurait toujours des tentatives de contourner les lois. Comment faire les choses en ce qui concerne la publication des informations Il faudrait L'idéal serait que chaque citoyen qui utilise Internet ait une identité numérique pour arriver à une solution. Effectivement, en Grande-Bretagne, les personnes n'ont même pas de carte d'identité. On a parlé d'une identification numérique, c'est un peu trop Néanmoins, il y a des, euh, so des tentatives qui ont été euh, menées au niveau so de l'électronique. Um, actually Donc, listen to them all the time. They, of course, would say no. But of course, we all do it voluntarily. Just the complexity of the challenge. 
I think technology has to be a part, regulation has to be a part, education has to be a part. Um, and then we haven't really talked a lot about politics, but just maintaining the kind of liberal democratic fora in which debate can happen, back to the rabbi's point. Um, and I'm not talking about religion, but I'm just talking about the kind of vigorous debate that helps defend truth. Um, so it's going to be a multifaceted solution, it's not going to be any one. But the point is, again, this allocation of responsibility across different stakeholders. Uh, I also think it's a question of picking our battles. We aren't going to be able to get rid of all fake news or indeed all uh, negative consequences of different technologies. The question is what really matters. Um, and then finally on this question, there are ways, um, and to the gentleman's point, there are ways to introduce regulation that is manageable, for example, advertising. There's no reason in my view why these companies should be able to have one standard for advertising online um, and a far stricter standard for advertising you know, in the paper version of the New York Times. Um, with respect to Richard's comment on anonymity, it's an important point, and we know from other sites like Yik Yak, which was an anonymous social media site that has been taken down, uh, that the FBI got involved in from time to time. We know that worse things happen on anonymous sites. The problem is that the perpetrators on anonymous sites are very hard to find, and the resources required to do so are um, disproportionate in many cases. Um, and the harm is already done, and indeed that's a big problem with this point I made earlier about the law lagging behind technology, which is by the time the law gets around to doing anything, um, it's too late and the harm is done. Um, and then finally, the question on AI, um, I'd be happy to take it offline in more detail. Um, you should have a look at a, at a network that's forming with companies like Salesforce and Microsoft. But the fundamental question for startups is, from the very beginning, to ask, what, what is the real good we're doing with this technology, and where might there be risk? And where there's risk, what might, might we do to mitigate that risk? And, um, and in your case, look at others, look at DeepMind, look at the other companies that are out there and see um, what their thinking is and how their thinking on these issues um, might be relevant to us. But I'm happy to take it offline. Um, and then to prove, I just wanted to make one comment since we're talking about fake news and my president keeps attacking my newspaper and others for fake news. Um, the one thing you have to understand about President Trump is he actually adores the New York Times. Trump, uh, he has a very intimate love-hate relationship uh, New with the New York Times. Times. He grew up with the New York yeah, Times. He, from New York, he grew up in Queens. The New York Times to him was Manhattan. It, it was the elite, it was glamour. He actually wants our love as much as he dislikes us. Um, and of course, when he calls us fake news, clearly what he's trying to do, he's using us as, as uh, puppets in his play that he's creating. But he's simply trying to make sure that when we actually do real news, which we tend to do, it particularly touches him and his administration, he can undermine the credibility by calling it all fake. Now, how you control the President of the United States is beyond me. But I do want to ask you to join me in taking the panel for what is a great discussion, and of which was on time. Okay. Thank you.